Good afternoon, everyone, to honorable juniors and seniors. Welcome to this sharing session. Firstly, let me introduce myself. My name is Munir. I'm the moderator. This is a sharing session between the seniors and you guys, the juniors, about the journey in FSKTM. So we'll have six passionate speakers consisting of second year students from all courses. So let me introduce the speakers. First, we have Tengku Naim from AI department. Second, we have Jimmy from Data Science. Next, we have Emily. She's from Networking department. And fourth, we have Kishor. Kishor is from Software Engineering. Fifth, we have Amir. Amir is from IS, Information Systems. And lastly, Naku. He's from Multimedia. So without further ado, let's start discussing. So right now, we are in COVID-19 pandemic. And e-learning classes have started to become a thing. So when you guys are enrolling in the e-learning class, um, there, are, there may be some problems that you guys have to, have, to, have to overcome or have to face in order to do online learning. And one of it is a technical problem. So I have a question for Kichok. So when it comes to e-learning or online learning, how do you overcome any sorts of technical problems? Okay, so hi guys. Uh, hi guys, okay. So technical problem during this uh, e-learning. So when we say e-learning, the most important thing is internet. So make sure you guys have a stable internet connection. If you don't have one, try your best to find a good spot where you can get access to the uh, strong Wi-Fi or a good internet connection. And I'm pretty sure some of you might be using Wi-Fi and some of you might be using hotspots just like me. So um, sometimes hotspots might be a bit exp uh, expensive uh, depending on the data plan. So I suggest you guys to do some surveys out there because um, Telco right now, they have um, student packages. So you may uh, do some survey and choose the best plan that suits you. And you have to make sure that you have a working camera and also mic because if you need these things during a lecture time. The lecturer might ask questions and you have, you have to answer them. And you also need a microphone and a camera compulsory for your presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Kishore. So right now, other than technical problems, we also have anything relating to the discipline because I believe most of you guys are staying at home. Or also there are some of you guys staying in colleges. So when it comes to staying at home or colleges, we need to consider the discipline. So I have a question for Jini. So do you have any uh, tips regarding discipline or things that as a student, what should they do and what should not they do um, when it comes to staying at home or college? So please. All right, thank you Munir for the question. Well, first of all, you have, have to have a tracker, either using sticky note or journal you need to make sure that you know all your deadlines because there's a lot of assignments and tutorials to submit. And then also, if you have morning classes, do wake up early. I recommend one hour earlier to maybe freshen up, eat something, go to the toilet, prepare, because you wouldn't want to be walking up and down during lecture. Mm -hmm. And you have to really focus during lectures, even though some are pre-recorded. But don't take that for granted because technical problems may happen or and the lecturer doesn't end up recording the lecture. And then also, Find a suitable environment to study. Study somewhere you won't have any disturbance and never, never on your bed because you're going to wake up six hours later being the only person in the call. And then lastly, do have some food or drinks around so you can be energetic during the lecture. So that's from me. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. So 
right now, let's move on to online learning class. So when you guys are enrolling in degree, so you guys have lectures and also tutorial classes, um, perhaps laboratory. So um, I want to ask Emily, uh, what did you do during lectures and tutorial classes? Like how do you conduct those classes? Or how do you join it, do the classes, yeah. So Emily? Okay, thank you, Munir. For these questions, the most important the most important points during the classes is focus. Usually, I will jot down the notes during the lecture for future revision. To avoid any interruptions, please do not do any irrelevant things during the lecture. I would suggest you to put your handphone far away from you to avoid disturbance. And for sure, you need to find a comfortable place to study and make sure your family won't disturb you during the class. Um, to make sure you are focusing on classes, try to come up with some questions and don't hesitate to ask your lecturers. This will, this will help you to understand the class better. Um, also, if you have a morning class, please wake up early to prepare yourself. Eat breakfast and go to toilet before the lecture starts so you can avoid from multitasking during the lecture. Also, I would suggest you to put a bottle of water beside you. Then you no need to leave your table when you feel thirsty. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. So right now, um, in online learning, in, in online learning, so you guys you also have to do presentation because presentation is part of the assignment. So when it comes to online presentations, uh, you guys have to present it online. So you have to, you know, put sit in front of the that uh, sit on <coughs> sit in front of camera and then present. So I want to ask Amir, um, how to perform well in online presentations, or what's the best way to to do online presentations in terms of the slide or perhaps the speech. All right, what's up, guys? Thank you, Mune, our moderator, for this afternoon. So, actually, when we are talking about online presentation and how to do well in it, for me, this is what I think. So, the first one is um, you have to always stick to your own style of presenta presentation because, uh, and you, you will have to know uh, and to differentiate between a formal and an informal presentation. Lah. And then the the one thing that you have to take note is not, not to try to copy other presenters uh, because sometimes other presenter has have different style from your style. So um, uh, it will, if you are trying to copy others, uh, it won't work like, it won't work the best. Uh. And then the second one is um, you guys, uh, it is okay for you guys to feel nervous, but um, it will make you extremely nervous when suddenly your mic or your audio, or audio system doesn't work. So when it comes to online presentation, you will have to do a round or two of technical checking lah before you guys start to present online. And then the third one is you, you guys have to have a good composure. Because when you are presenting and you are somewhere else, there is not a face-to-face -face presentation. Maybe you are at your house, so you will have to have a good composure. Because sometimes um, you don't know what will happen at your house. Yeah, like maybe sometimes your cat may, may jump on your laptop and then maybe your mom will yell at you. Yeah, commenting that you always are in front of your laptop like that. So you will have to have a good composure. Lah. And then the third one is um, about the slides. So when it comes to slide, I think this is all you guys know what it is when it comes to slide. You will have to have um, point out the main point only and have um, a little bit more of diagrams so that um, the one that you will read your presentation will have the bigger image of what you are presenting and what your project project is. So that's all. Thank you. All right. Thanks for the insights. 
So we we'll move on to the next part. So other than presentation, also you guys will have assignments. So when it comes to assignments, um, for eight subjects, of course there is uh, assignments. So I have a question for Naku. Um, how can one actually excel in doing assignments? Oh, um, hello. Uh, thank you, Muni, for the question. Uh, hello, everyone. Good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, so to answer that question, how can uh, one excel in presentation? Your presentation, as I mean, um, so it really depends on reading the question. Now. I mean, that's how I see it. Um, when you got the assignment question, try to read it uh, truly. Uh, read truly the the passage, the assignment punya, you know, the assignment punya paper, and then when you got it, try to find out the key things that the lecturer actually wants. Like they usually, especially uh, in your first years, you will often see this. Um, the, uh, the paper would say your software your program must have this 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 feature it must uh implement this 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 thing that you learn in class into the program it, in this in the uh programming punya course lah kan? and of course uh you need to uh fulfill those uh, conditions in order to get a good grade. I wouldn't say you get a fabulous grade because usually these passing conditions usually just give you um, at most point A. If you want to get A plus, what you're also going to see, this is in the sense of programming again, like I will take an example. Uh, like last year, last semester, um, for data structure, my assignment was, uh, I was assigned to do a dating simulator, dating, dating app. Lah. Hmm. It's an application, but it does not specify that you need to do it uh, on mobile. Uh, they say you can do it uh, a computer. It's like a simulation. It's not something real point, but they say you can take it a step further. Ada to list the assignment paper too. It, it stated that if you want to get a good marks for this assignment, A plus, you can turn it into a real full fledged uh, mobile application. And if you did that, you get you know good marks for your assignment lah. Um, so that's one thing that you can uh, try to excel because you try to do uh, extra things. The other uh, advice that I would give you is that uh, try to um, work well along with your teammates. Uh, try not to argue. There are times that where you need to take initiative and you need to know where you need to back off. Sometimes uh, your idea will not get delivered uh, truly to your teammates and that's fine. Um, I'm taking this from my own past experiences, by the way, because I let say before this, I have uh, this one course that I insisted on the things to go in this direction because I think because it's an English course and we were discussing like uh topic up not what for the for the talk for the for the oral test yeah and I was I wanted to talk about something that actually matters but the team uh other surround me oh other surround team um she insisted on something even more simpler so uh so i have to like agree lah. i have to like back off for a moment and yeah try to not to say that you need you don't you that passionate in your work don't be like that uh what i try to say know when to take initiative and know when to back off mm. that's that's the t that's the thesis okay bye Okay, thanks Naku for your insights. So we have mentioned just now that um, being a, a good team member is important in assignments. So um, I also want to ask this to Naim. Perhaps he can explain it further. So um, Naim, uh, what do you think? How to become a good team member in connecting your assignments? Thank you, Mune, and hi everyone. 
I guess, firstly, of course, you need to be cooperative in a team. And it goes without saying that you should make sure to always do your assigned part. However, don't be reluctant to lend a helping hand if other members are facing difficulty. I mean, not everyone knows everything, and for all you know, the knowledge, the knowledge you have might complement each other's knowledge, and that is what makes a group assignment fun. You learn from each other. Just because the task wasn't assigned to you, don't be a drama queen and just help out everyone. Secondly, if you have any suggestions, don't be afraid to voice them out. Likewise, if there is something that you feel is off about what you're doing, don't be afraid to discuss it with the team. Remember that it is a group assignment and that all of your input together is what will make the outcome the best it can be. Lastly, don't depend on your team leader at all the time. Because you're going to have to, like Jeannie mentioned earlier, you're going to have many assignments to do at the same time. And that may mean that your group leader might be busy at times. If there's anything important or deadlines coming up that your leader might have overlooked, just remind them in the group. It's that easy. Coming from personal experience as well, there were some times where even our group leader didn't know what to do. So we had to, we worked as a team and took our own initiatives to find out properly uh, based on the specifications given, and that's what made our group projects really fun and the best it could be. That'll be all from Imune. Okay, uh, thanks Naim. So Naim just emphasized on um, having good team members. Um, so when it comes to uh, having team members, uh, you guys also have to, it's best, it, you, go, you guys also have to find good team members. So that becomes a problem. So um, I have a question for Jeannie. Uh, so how do you find good teammates in doing your assignments, especially right now when it's online? Hey, hi, everyone. I know this is a major question everyone's wondering because it's online classes right now and you have never even seen your classmates or friends face to face. So what I can say is look out for those who are very proactive in class. They frequently ask lecturer questions and they give their valid opinions. I think people like these will be good teammates because they are outspoken. They'll contribute to the team. And there's nothing much I can say about finding a good teammate. But like what Naim said, be a good teammate. So once you're familiar yourself, I mean sorry, once you're familiar yourself during first semester, then second semester shouldn't be a problem already. You would know who is the quality teammate. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we've done with talking about Simon. So other than Simon, we also have exams. So uh, exams includes uh, quizzes and tests. So um, I have a question for Emily. Uh, how do you make preparation for exam? Like, well, how do you study? Do you, how do you make preparation overall? Yeah. So back to, so I would like to pass to Emily. Okay, thank you, Mona, for these questions. For me, I will mark my schedule to make sure I'm free during, during the exam time. If I notice there is an exam clash, I will tell the lecturer immediately so that my that our lecturer can reschedule the exam as soon as possible. Next, please make sure you know your exam format. For the example, you need to know is the exam consists of only MCQs questions or only subjective questions or both. And Please make sure you already install the required software in your devices, such as NetBeans for S NetBeans for, for Foundation of Programming course, Packet Tracer for Network Technology Foundation course. And make sure you know how to use the software. If not, you will be panicked during the exam. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. So Emily just mentioned about the do's of uh, when it comes to preparing for exam. So we have to consider also the don'ts of uh, the don'ts of side of things. So um, I have a question for Kishore. Uh, 
what are the things that as a student he should avoid when it comes to doing exams uh, before or perhaps during the exam and also can you provide any source of uh, technical advice or anything else that's uh, also important so please Kishok. all right thank you Muni. So um, right now, uh, due to this pandemic, we have quite a different system Bef because before this, we had uh, continuous assessment and so final exam. But now uh, we have summative assessment, which means we have uh, multiple exams and they will sum up for our um, grade. So please don't be ignorant of your exam. Each and every, um, me even though that part, that part of assessment is just 10%, even that 10% is very important. Even one mark is important to differentiate between A plus and A. So don't be ignorant and please prepare a schedule for your exam. Since there are many exams, you might get confused. So create a planner and um, jot down the important dates for every exam and also uh, suitable days for you to do your revision. And you have to inform your lecturer as soon as uh, possible if there are any clashes between exams so that your lecturer can reschedule uh, that particular uh, exam. And next, you have to get to know which platform you're going to use for your uh, exam. Some lecturers might use Google Form, some might use Spectrum, and some there are a lot of platforms out there. So get to know that platform and maybe you can try to use that platform so that you don't get confused on how to use that platform during the exam. Please, uh, the third one is very important. Please do charge your devices, your laptop, your handphone, a heat of your exam, and also your uh, power bank, because you don't know what might happen during the exam. There might be electric cut off. So do prepare a uh, bag of plans. And okay, this is the most important thing. Uh, sometimes, uh, most of the times, the lecturers might ask you to submit your answers through Spectrum. And on that uh, exam day, there might be high traffic and you couldn't do so. So what you have to do, don't get panic. Do uh, email your lecture your answer sheet as soon as possible because there might be a time limit uh, for those who cannot submit through Spectrum. So that's all from me. Thank you. Thanks for the tips, Kishok. Um, so right now, um, when it comes to exams also, um, there's also a need to have to study or to do uh, past year questions. So either that's for finals or for mid -sem. So um, Naku, uh, do you know like where can the where can uh, we get the past year questions? Uh, okay. Uh, so unlike. Uh, your previous punya, you know, institutions of study where you would go to like, maybe for SPM lah, for example, you need to buy a book to get your parcel questions. But because uh, in university, every parcel question is actually catered by the university itself. So it's not really something that uh, you can access them, of course. I, I know I'm going to get to that. Um... But you need to be a UM student line in order to access uh, these past year questions. So I actually knew this uh, of this uh, feature, I guess you can say feature, um, back when I was in PASO, uh, Pusat Asasi UM, nah, Pusat Asasi University Malaya. Um, you can access those past year questions by going to the digital UM library. Unfortunately, because we are doing a live stream right now via StreamYard, uh, I, I would like to like easily share my screen to, to show you how to do it. But um, due to the limitations, maybe I can just maybe uh, briefly guide you how to do it. Lah. So you go to your, um, you, you type in UM, UM lib, umlib.um.edu.my and then from there uh, you will come to your, the home page you can uh, scroll down there's a big box that says uh, past year questions to which that you can click 
and then the Akankua, another page um, uh, prompting you to sign in. Unfortunately for you guys, because you're first year students, you need this uh, uh, to magic card. Unfortunately, I was told that you don't have you don't have this yet, which is unfortunate for you guys because you need this in order to um, log into the UM digital library. Um, but yeah, when you do have it, I'm not really sure the arrangement either. Um, maybe you get it, maybe you don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, you need this in order to log in. And once you logged in, you will see all the past year questions are sorted uh, by faculty. So when you click on the faculty, it will come up the course, uh, the course code, and then you take on the course code, and then you see the all the past year questions lah, sorted by year. So that how, that's how you access those past year, past year questions. I don't think mid year questions, mid year, mid year, mid semester. You say um, questions are there, but uh, final year certainly are there. And it also uh, comes to subject to availability, availability. So it really comes to like if the lecturer decides to post it, share it, uh, make it public on the UM digital library then you can find it. But there are certain instances you may not find it. But this is rare. Mm. OK, uh, thanks, Naku, for the tips on past year questions. So right now, um, I'm going to talk about um, subjects. So um, I believe the subjects that you guys are taking for this semester is uh, information systems. Uh, Network Technology Foundation, Fundamentals of Programming, uh, Computer Systems and Organization, and Computing Nets. So, um, so out of all these subjects, uh, I want to ask Emily, um, what should be done or what are the tips for uh, each of these subjects so that uh, the juniors can make the best out of it? Thank you, Monia, for these interesting questions. Um, for information system, the most important thing is you need to know what is information system. Because all the stuff you learn during these 14 weeks are probably just telling you how to use IS. IS consists of what and how people implement IS in the world. Don't memorize IS just like you memorize sejarah, sejarah when you are in secondary school. It won't help you. The most important thing is you need to understand. Mm, second, for the Network Technology Foundation course, you all you need is to understand all the comments and theories. You, you will need to do many packet traces lab during the course and don't expect you, you can score in your exam if you just memorize the packet tracer comment. You need to understand all the theories and implement that in your uh, exam. Uh, next, for fundamentals of programming, try to do all the tutorials and lab questions by yourself. You can browse the webs to learn the programming skills. Mm, you will visit Stack Overflow gits or gits and github very often so i suggest you to bookmark them now and for next course cso which is mean uh, computer system and organization you can learn from the youtube channel named neso academy uh, there is a playlist that consists of our syllabus so please check it out for the next course, Computing Maths, mm, there is a popular quote for this course, practice math perfect. So do all the tutorial questions and discuss the questions with your friends and find some questions from the web as your extra practice. I'm sure you can score well in this course. And so in short, 
the most important point is to understand all courses and do all your assigned homeworks. So, yeah, I wish you all can score well in this end. Thank you. So, uh, Emily, thank you for the tips for each of the subjects. So, um, right now, uh, other than subjects, uh, for this semester, we also have, you guys also have to uh, register for the next semester. So, I want to ask Amir, um, do you have any tips for the next semester in terms of the uh, subject registration? Hi, you guys. So, um, what do I have to say when you have when you wanted to register for the second semester is actually the faculty will actually provide you with this like maybe this kind of template that will guide you on what to take uh, throughout the whole the whole years of you studying in UM lah. But but um sometimes um you will want to add or um add or uh, in, uh you will want to add more subjects uh when you are in the second semester for example when you are jumping from the first semester and then um, you are registering for the second semester you will want to add uh some university uh subjects like uh english like that so that is when uh, it is important for you guys to wake up early on the registration day and register as earlier as possible because that is a university course. Because when it is a university course, there will be a lot of uh, students who will want to register it. So uh, every subject have a limit for participating. So if you are late, then you might miss the subjects that you want. So um, the second tips is for you to take notes on important dates of re registration and then uh, do take notes of this uh, flow of registration. Um, the first um, subject that you will want to register is the university course. The second one is the faculty course and the third one is the core courses of your um, faculty. Lah. So using that flow you won't it will help you registering better lah. all right that's all for me thank you all right thanks amir so other than registration um we also have to consider um you know getting good grades so getting good grades is very important right so you, so you, get, you guys can uh, excel in your exams and getting uh, high gpas so um i want to ask uh, naku um, for all the subjects, like how to get good grades, like overall for all of the subjects? Then, yeah. mm. So uh, this is a, a very general question. So not specific uh, as the ones that were previously, previously asked before. <laughs> um, so how to get good grades for every other subject that other than the ones that were already mentioned. I think it all comes to your time management. Um, try to look very closely into every each and every course, uh, how you say, marks distribution. Okay, I think this is very important. Try to very be very analytical of it. Uh, be very anal analyzing because um, try to make a strategy. Uh, degree is, is some sort of a strategy game life. You can think about it. Um, so I will try to give you an example. Now. So say if there's this one copy so it means that you need to spend a lot of time uh, for doing all those courseworks but the weightage for the final paper won't be as heavy maybe it's like 15 percent 20 percent i don't know it does happen there are some courses that are like that where the final your paper is not that very uh heavy the weightage is um but and but also, on the other hand, you have this one subject that is very light on the coursework. I won't say light on the coursework. Every course has its own assignments and projects. But 
there are certain uh, uh, courses that does not require you, for example, to submit your tutorials, um, submit your labs. I'm not saying don't do those labs. I'm saying you can take less time focusing on those tutorials and labs and focus more time on the coursework for the coursework heavy related courses. Um, and then you can try to delegate your attention, your effort into into those into those things lah. Mm. So if I say you're nearing towards the end of week 14, uh, you're very busy. So try to do all those assignments uh, ahead of time. And in, in week 14, then you can just focus on studying for the finals, especially for the upper final, where the weightage of the final people are very, very heavy for those courses. Mm. That would be my advice for how to get good grades overall for our subjects. I mean, try not to think too much of trying to get perfect score. Um, again, the the only thing that matters is that if you want to get four flat, it's just that you need to get paling paling point, a solid will be fine. You don't need to kejar the A+. Plus. Surely, if you can go uh, and get it, that's fine, but I'm trying to be realistic and trying to be, uh, uh, you know, something tangible. We, uh, A plus, especially in, in for certain subjects, for for subjects that with many credit hours, such as uh, fundamentals of programming, which is five hours. Yeah, okay. Uh, for me, that's very susah lah nak dapat A plus for me. I think because uh, if tengok dekat, if we see the the two point, uh, only a few handful je yang dapat A plus. So, try to get E solid and not A plus. Because in terms of pointer, it's still, uh, you know, sama je. Tak ada biasa pun. So, hmm, itu je. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Naku, for your tips. So we're done with uh, discussing about subjects. Um, so right now, I'm going to ask um, like a general question. So um, we know that uh, productivity is important. So when it comes to productivity, there are tools or softwares that are available for students can use to make sure that they can uh, do their work, uh, conduct their assignments, or do their tutorials. So um, Naim, um, is there any productivity tools that, that is useful for students? Ah, okay. Um, straight to being honest, I don't use too many tools because I don't see the need to kind of have the same things for, sorry, sorry, have multiple tools for the same things. But when I do use tools, it comes down to two of them. Trello and Notion, that's T-R-E-L-L-O and Notion, and O T I O N. Fun fact, Notion is, was introduced to me by our moderator himself, Munir. <laughs> okay, so Trello is essentially a list-making software which can be mainly used for collaborative work in tracking what you need to do, who is assigned to it, and when it should be completed. This comes in really handy when it comes to group assignments because then you can stack when you should continue with the next task after this task has been finished. It of course also works on a personal level to keep track of your tutorials and your own individual goals. What notes do I want to do today? When should I finish them? If it comes down to me, I'm the kind of person who kind of like needs self-motivation. So when I assign myself a time of when I need to finish this, I somehow like guilt myself that, okay, I only have one hour to do this, I need to do this now. Notion on the other hand is a software that I could simply say provides a workspace. I mainly treat it as my notebook nowadays because rather than before I had a word file for like every single lecture and that was very inefficient and it just made me lazy to just open up to read. So now with Notion, I can have just one page for that subject and multiple sub pages with all the notes from the lectures in it. I find that really efficient and easy to look back on. You can also use it to keep track of what you need to do and when you need to complete them, similar to Trello. I also personally like that you can keep, that you can integrate a calendar into it, which you can easily schedule, refer, and remind you of like meetings and deadlines you need to keep track of. Of course, you're gonna have a lot of meetings for assignments, so you need to know when you should schedule your meetings and when to say, I have a meeting that night, I can't do it that night. 
Of course, lastly, tools are very personal and I would say that you should explore it on your own and see what suits you best. That's all from me. Thanks, Naeem. So um, let's, not, let's move on to the questions that you guys have asked in the form that you have filled in. So um, let's go through the questions right now. So, um, so first question, um, so in computer science program, um, we're going to take lots of subjects, right? So you have university courses, um, program core courses, uh, faculty courses. So uh, I have a question uh, for Kishore. So uh, how do you cope with uh, certain subjects that you are not interested that, and also that, that is difficult to understand? Okay, thank you Muni for the question. Uh, okay, hi everyone. For me, in my opinion, there is no such thing as uninteresting subject. All subjects are interesting if you explore them in a correct, correct way. So the first thing is, um, do focus during a lecture. I understand that the lecture might be quite long, two or three hours, and then you might be sleepy during the lecture. So I would suggest you to keep some sweets like Copico. I'm not promoting Copico, it's just my suggestion. You can keep something like Copico to keep you awake during the lecture. Stay focused, jot down all the important points given by your lecture. Um, jot down whatever points that are not stated in the lecture slides, but are important. That sometimes uh, the lecture might simplify the whole slide in uh, maybe one or two sentences. That is the part that you have to jot down. And some um, sometimes the lecture might also give you some tips for your exam. Jot down. And um, the second one, um, do attempt your tutorial qu uh, questions. Before that, before attempting uh, tutorial questions, go through your lecture slides again. And for uh, for you to be a bit, uh, be able to memorize your lecture slides uh, better, go through the lecture slides before uh, attempting your tutorial questions. And if there are any parts that you couldn't understand, you can watch YouTube videos or do some research on Google and do a simplified version of notes. And the third one, um, to enhance your understanding, you can also uh, try past year questions. Just like um, our senior has suggested how to go through the UM uh, leap and download the past year questions. Maybe you can download a few past uh, year questions and after finishing each chapter, you can go through the past year question and identify which question are related to this topic. Try those uh, questions because um, the exam, you need to be uh, uh, similar to the exam questions. So by following all these tips, I don't think so uh, that uh, particular subject will be difficult for you. Thank you. I appreciate the insights, Kisha. So you guys right now are enrolling in computer science, right? So when it comes to computer science, we must mention about programming. So here comes the problem. So if a person does not have a programming background, will he or she able to survive the course? Like what should one person do to improve themselves in subjects like programming? So, um, Jeannie, uh, what's your take on this? Okay, thank you, Munil. First, I want to start off by saying you definitely will survive because I can speak from personal experience. I came from SCPM and biology stream, so zero programming background. And what I can say is practice makes perfect. Like uh, just now everyone has mentioned, do your labs, do your tutorials. All those are very good tips because the questions given are actually quite challenging. So if you can solve those on your own, I think you are quite well prepared, but do not stop there. You can seek external resources also. And then do if you cannot do it, don't give up. Find help. Don't waste many, many hours on one question. You can learn from others. Don't be afraid to ask, of course. And programming is all about understanding. Do not memorize theory. Because if you can understand it, it can go a very long way because you can do application already. And if you do not have programming background like me, what I did was I took the initiative and started learning a week or two beforehand. I didn't learn much, but at least it was a head start. So now it's not too late. Go YouTube, there are plenty of tutorials for beginners, so you can learn from there. Thank you. I see. Okay, thank you, Jeannie, for the insights. So uh, dear juniors, uh, just to remind, if you have any questions you'd like to ask, uh, feel free to put it in the comment section. Uh, we'll have a short Q and A session. Uh, short in the after we have finished uh, this 
sharing session. So um, next question. I have so this one is for uh, Amir. So do you have any recommended website or apps that can help to sharpen our skill as a programmer just for extra self learning? Hey guys. So um, when we are talking about a websites that is used to sharpen programming skills and for self studies. So um, most of the time I will be going back to YouTube because there is a lot of other programmers that will share the ways of you to um, program. And then other than YouTube, there, there is also websites that is called GitHub. Uh, like GitHub, W3Schools, Free Code Camp, which is very essential for you to learn the basic of coding. Lah. And then there is also, because when you are in the first year, you are going to learn the fundamental of programming, and then you are going to learn the Java language. So there is also one website that is specifically for you to learn uh, Java language, which is called Gigs for Gates. So this, uh, this is the best way for you to start learning uh, the Java language. Ah. And then don't ever limit yourself that um, you will always find um, uh, more sources from the internet. So just uh, go to Google and then let's say you are going to have to make a calculator. Like that is the easiest one, the calculator. So um, you if you don't know how to make it, uh, then you just have to go to the uh, to Google's and just Google it uh, calculator and then uh, Java examples uh, something like that and then they, they will always have uh, other programmers who posted their codes online uh. so that's all thank you thanks Amir for the advice so um, you guys are still new right to FSKTM so probably you have no idea what it's like to be in our faculty. So I'm talking about the uh, lecturers or the students. So I have a question for Emily. Um, how is the culture like uh, within this faculty? Okay, thank you, Munir, for these questions. About the culture like within the faculty, Mm, I think the culture of our faculty is very casual, friendly, and relaxed. Unlike other faculty, our faculty is, is not so strict on the attendance matter. But even the attendance doesn't really matter to our faculty. You still need to attend the lecture, yeah? Mm, our lecturers are very good in teaching. Most of them explain the knowledge in, uh, in a very easily understandable way that a newbie also can understand easily. Uh, since now we are going through e-learning, your lecturer probably won't notice your uh, your questions inside the chat box when they are focusing in teaching. Mm, in that case, I suggest you to unmute yourself to ask questions during the breaks between lecture. Or else you can jot down your questions and email the questions to the lecturer after the class. I'm sure they will reply your email in their convenience. Our lecturers are very friendly, so don't hesitate to ask them questions. They are willing to help us when we have any problem regarding our studies. Next, our faculty consists of students that come from different countries. When I was in Sam 1, I met friends from China, Thailand, UK, Egypt, and so on. They are very nice. You can make friends with them and even team up with them in your assignment group. I'm, I am sure both of you will learn something during the project. Since the teammates are fro come from different countries and have different cultures, hence we can solve the problem in different perspectives. Yeah, 
that's all for me. Thank you. Good insights, Emily. Um, so next question, um, I this one is for Naku. Um, this might sound a bit personal for you. Uh. Um, what's the hardest part of being an FSKTM student? Ah, okay. So again, this is a very personal question. Mm, so this might not apply to everybody lah. But for me, if it if the hardest thing that uh ever happens that struck to me as the most hardest thing, I guess, would be the fact that I actually came for a very entirely different field before I enrolled in this course. I was in Pasum for you know for the whole for the whole 10 months i was actually doing health sciences so i was taking biology um physics chemistry all that lah. um and i have no basic in programming at all uh so at first it was quite intimidating that's not to say that uh uh this is not my first choice uh, when it comes to the courses that I've tried to enroll in. Uh, don't ask me how I came to the decision of wanting to go for this course. Actually, there's a story, lah, but uh, yeah, I actually put this as my first choice. Um, but yeah, when I got enrolled, uh, there, it would be lying to say that I wasn't uh, a little bit intimidated by these uh, people who probably came from uh, diploma in computer science, diploma in information technology, or maybe even if you like from Pasum Physical, for example, foundations of physical sciences. Also, also uh, other universities also offer foundations in um, programming as well. So they might already have like uh, basic in Java or C++. So, you know, that of, of course scared me a little bit, but uh, it is assuring to know that none of it is very, uh, none of it is like necessary for you to enroll in this course. Um, uh, yeah, the key takeaway from this is that if any of you find yourself scared of the fact that, oh no, I tak pandai lah Java, I tak pandai lah C++. You need to persevere on. Uh, inshallah, you can do it. It's it's certainly a skill to be acquired. And once I've learned it, I feel like, oh, wow. Uh, programming is particularly quite fun. Kind. Even though I suka sangat, um, I, I like multimedia, but... Uh, programming, in a sense, is a, is a very entirely new skill to me, and I feel like it's very fun, especially in my first year, uh, in my first semester, where I was uh, asked, uh, assigned to do the Tetris assignment project, and I managed to do it, and I feel like, oh, a sense of accomplishment. So for sure that for some of you who does not intend to have this your this course as your first choice or something like that, then rest the shirt, uh, you will do just fine. Mm. That's all for me. All right. Uh, thank you, Naku. So um, next one. Uh, what is the best program or activity for students to join to improve our skills? Or what kind of activities that is uh, highly encouraged for students to join to enhance uh, skills? So uh, I believe I want to ask this question to Naim. Thank you, Mune. I think that's a very important question, especially while, when we're in university and have a lot of opportunities to join things. So from a technical point of view, in terms of programming or solution ideation, hackathons are a lot of fun to join. I completely agree with Adi. This kind of competitions can be a bit intimidating because some students may be from already technical backgrounds. They have, they know computer science, they know how to cope. But you should never think that you're not qualified enough to be joining these kind of competitions. I myself joined my first hackathon when I was in my first semester, just like you. And at the time I had very little coding knowledge. 
I could visit probably write a for loop in Java. But instead, I took up the role of designing the UI, graphic design work, and somewhat marketing our solution. So the point of hackathons are to bring people of multiple talents together and work as a group to build up an interesting solution. And then there also comes programming competitions, whether nationally or internationally, even like the likes of Google and Facebook have their own programming competitions you can join. I find this very interesting and they, can, they come in multiple levels of difficulty. So you should never think that, oh no, it's going to be too hard. I'm not going to achieve anything. You can always either, you never know, you know, you can join the lower level ones and maybe you'll end up on top or at the very least you'll start to learn what, what, how, other people, how other people in the world perform. And of course, there's also capture the flag competitions where you, it's more towards networking and you can learn more about cybersecurity if that interests you. Uh, in terms of the soft skills side, which is equally important in computer science, remember, computer science is not just programming. Joining as a community member in or even participants in like any type of events help enables you to learn to work with people, learn about project management, learn about other skills. This is equally as important to build your character as you grow up. It's not just about knowing one skill and that's all I can do. You should be able to branch out and learn a lot of new things, meet other people. Uh, of course, uh, learning soft skills are also applicable to the above mentioned, like the programming competitions and hackathons. And lastly, I would say self-learning, especially nowadays while we're on online, in uh, online learning work is equally important. You can try to take out online classes, certifications on your own. This is the time where your own initiative matters a lot. However, I do want to note that you should never pressure yourself to need to take everything. Do what interests you, do what you actually have passion for, and have fun in the process of learning. That's what we're all here for. That's all from me, Monique. I appreciate the advice, Naeem. So um, next one, uh, what are the skill sets that first year students should aim to acquire to flourish in the upcoming years? So uh, Amir, can you answer this question? All right, so um, the six skill sets that the first year students should actually aim to acquire the flourish in the upcoming years is you will always have to focus on you will have to have a strong basics knowledge about programming and then the second one is you have to have a strong strong knowledge about logic thinkings uh, and then logic logic calculation because sometimes you will always have to do a calculation when you are doing your programming and then yeah and then you will also have to develop a good uh, social skills because uh when we are talking about um social when we are talking about you when you are in a project teams you will have to communicate with each others which will which when you have a good communication skills that will make uh, a good team and then yeah i think that's all them. thank you Thanks, Amir. So next question, um, how can I sign up as project committee? So um, I believe this question uh, you are asking about uh, this organization that organized this sharing session. So um, so this is the, the sharing session is organized under Persatuan Computer University Malaya or we call it PECOM. So um, for PECOM, uh, if you want to join as a committee, uh, just wait for any updates in the future. And also be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. So Instagram is PECOMUM, P-E-K-O-M-U-M. So um, next question. Uh, how is the faculty like? What are the facilities available? So um, Emily? Can you answer this question? Um, yes. Okay. Thank you, Munir, for the questions. Mm, I understand most of you cannot come to UN because of the pandemic. And I know you all are very excited to 
about what house our faculty looks like. So I will briefly talk to you about how our faculty look like. Sir. Mm, our faculties consist of two blocks, block A and block B. Most of the lecture halls and tutorial rooms are located in block B, whereas block A consists of CCNA lab, Bilet Kulia and Bilet Multimedia for the FOP, CSO, IS, and networking classes. Uh, also, there's a cube located at Block A Ground 4. Most of the seminar and workshop probably will use the cube. Mm, for your information, our office also located at Block A. Block A, ground four. Next, at the first floor of Block B, there is a study room for all the undergraduate students. So if you are seeking a comfortable study corner or just want to take a break after lecture, you can visit our study room. Mm, oh yeah, last but not least, there's a cafe behind Block A, so uh, you can have a lunch at the cafe after the class. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Emily. Um, so we move on to the next question. So I believe uh, this question should be answered by Jeannie. So uh, Jeannie, according to you, uh, what is the biggest challenges during your studies in FSKTM so far? All right, thank you, Munio. So my biggest challenge would be being a holistic person. We all have to agree that university is going to be the best year of our lives. And personally for me, I do not want to just focus on my studies. I would want to join other activities as well. Like previously, we have mentioned that joining extra core curriculum activities will harness your soft skills. So for my first year, time management was extremely crucial. I had zero programming background yet I still wanted to join other activities. So do know your limits. Do not join too much and burden yourself because we have to know our priorities, which is studies. And right now, I already, I believe I have the good foundation. So it's never too late to join activities in your second year as well. So that's all from me. Thanks for the insights, Jenny. Um, so next question. Is it merit marks really important for first year student? If yes, how to collect that merit during this pandemic as everything is online? So, Naim? I would say that aside from just looking at the marks itself, you should join events either as a committee member or participants for the joy of it to meet people, learn collaborative work, and have fun. Again, I stress that you shouldn't pressure yourself into joining too many things, like Jenny just said, too many especially, since you also have your studies, assignments, tutorials to take care of. Find your priority. Being online also should not be a problem if that's your worry, because we will still, or Pocom will still be able to handle, uh, organize events, and throughout the university, you'll be able to find interesting events. You can just keep an eye out for any announcement. And if an event interests you, by all means, go ahead and have fun while you're at it. That's the joy of being in university. That's not from me. Thanks, Naim. So a student asked, what can I do to survive through online learning since we're not meeting face to face? Sometimes lecturer doesn't even answer my question during they are lecture because in most of my class, minimum students were about 65 plus. I did not make any friends from the same course or faculty. There is no guidance during my registration, but only by video, which does not explain in details why should I choose this particular subject, even during orientation. So uh, Kishok, would you like to answer this question? Okay, thank you Muni for the question. So firstly, this is online learning and this is the biggest challenge 
um asking questions at lecture okay uh, it depends on your lecture some lecturers they prefer the students to interrupt they allow the students to interrupt them during the lecture time and ask questions using the mic but there are also some lecturers that don't like uh, students interrupting their lecture session and allow the students to ask using the chat box so you have to follow your um, lecturer's preference and make sure you ask questions if they have any doubts so that you can answer your tutorial questions and as for the second part mm, yes it is very difficult to find uh, friends because you're not meeting them uh, face to face that's only online platform so i would suggest you there i'm sure there must be whatsapp groups for your tutorial group or uh, groups in teams right so maybe you can look for some friends in the same tutorial group so that you can ask questions regarding the tutorial question you can discuss with them or uh, you can ask questions regarding the assignment you need friend you need to know some some people uh, from the same tutorial group and as for the course registration yes i understand this is the first time you registered the course and you don't know why you're taking that course um, I think you can follow the structure, the template given to you. There are a list of uh, subjects here that you can take during that semester. You can follow the um, the plan given to you. And I, I would suggest you to view the timetable in Maya. You can view the timetable for each module when and uh, when the class will be hold. And create a schedule for you, uh, for your class. Make sure there are no clashes so that you can simply register a module on that day without any problem. Thank you. Thanks, Kisha. Uh, dear juniors, uh, just to remind again, if you have any questions you would like to ask at the moment, feel free to put it in the comment. Uh, we'll have a Q&A session very soon. So I'm done with the questions from the students. Uh, right now, I want to go into uh, questions that are course specific or career specific. So um, the first question, uh, did we have necessary software in multimedia? So uh, Naku, since you are from multimedia course, uh, can you answer this question? Uh, so yeah, I've caught this question very often by the students from multimedia, either through personal DM or uh, through the group chat itself. Um, should I, how do I say this? Um, should I lead it on to you uh, real quick, the slap of reality? Um, so this course, multimedia course, is unfortunately, if you expect that you would do designing 24-7, if you expect that you'll be animating quite often, if you are say that you will do printing, uh, color theory, you will learn about color theory, uh, design principles. Unfortunately, I may have to lay it on to you thick right now here. We are not going to learn any of those. Uh, at least not in the first year. And for the way that I look at the cost structure, I don't think I would probably be learning it at all later on the year later on the course uh this is not this is very this is a computer science subject at its core you need to learn programming a lot you need to learn uh you know it related stuff more than you do learn uh multimedia the only course in the first year that is remotely connect would be fundamentals of multimedia which in theory is a lot more about uh formats of jpeg like you would learn uh the differences between jpeg and png the type the the html code the unicode those are the theories that you would learn and in terms of softwares the softwares that you would learn in uh, first year would be Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Anime, uh, and also Adobe Flash. Although I do realize Adobe Flash has already been discontinued, I'm not really sure how the cost structure would be like after this. But um, yeah, those are the softwares that you would need and you would learn. 
Uh, but that is semester two and only once you've learned it. And if I were to be completely honest, it was very basic. I feel like a lot of it has to come from your own, uh, how you say, dedication through uh, to to this multimedia thing. If you rather say that, oh, I really wanted to be a graphic designer when I graduate. Then um, in your private time, because I must say that fundamentals of programming really, really sticks to it, name that it really teaches you the fundamentals only. Um, and yeah, that's the harshest part for me to, to try to say to you, lah, but I need to address this because a lot of people have been asking me the same question. Not to say that you're not going to learn anything related to multimedia, surely they will, but probably later and they are very, and you can actually specialize into those. So if you want to do animation, you can take animation, but that is your, in your third year. Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of how you would you get those softwares, you will not hear this from me, but those are all pirated. Unfortunately, you am the do it, so uh, uh, you won't get to use Adobe Creative uh, Suite. Uh, they will not sponsor you uh, to use the paid version of Adobe Creative Suite. So you need to, you know, be resourceful. Uh, I will not give you the links, but Maybe you can meet and then I can give you the links for the for the set applications lah because I use them often. Mm -hmm. So Tuche, thank you. Thanks, Naku. Moving on to the next question. So this one is regarding uh, artificial intelligence AI. So um, how can I improve my skill for artificial intelligence course? How do I raise my employability specifically for AI degree? Is there any competitions or events that are recommended for me to join? So uh, Naim, I believe you should answer this. All right, thank you, Mune. Uh, uni university courses we take when we specialize will of course provide us with in-depth fundamentals in the various areas of AI, such as machine learning and natural language processing. Even in your first year, second semester, you will take fundamentals of AI. Don't mistake this as already introducing you to the super complex stuff. In the fundamentals of AI, you will learn the basic of the theories. And even with that knowledge, it won't be enough to, uh, to say you would have the skills in them already. So it can, be, it can always be your independent effort to try our online classes, three number ones being machine learning by Andrew M. And I believe some Stanford uh, courses for or imperial, I think, for mathematics, for machine learning. And to further enhance your resume, you can also take certifications, such as certifications for TensorFlow or cloud computing, examples being uh, Amazon Web Services, AWS, certifications specific to AI fields, such as machine learning engineers and such. Competition-wise, as a whole, joining events like hackathons will encourage you to put your skills into real-life applications. Many organizations nowadays are interested in making use of their data to predict and suggest good decisions with. As such, joining such events will expose you to building models, making predictions, and also heavily important, pitching your solutions. So this comes, uh, this is where your soft skills also come important if you're thinking about employability. You may have the skill, but you also have to know how to express your findings and pitch your solutions. Don't be afraid to learn and try these things out. There's a lot for you to explore out there, especially these days. So just make it count and have fun in the process. That's from me. Thanks, Naim, for the insights. So I have a question for Jeannie, since this is about data science. What skills and knowledge that I should enhance to study data science in UM? Is there any tips and tricks in studying data science? All right, thank you, Munio. First off, I want to say that um, I don't have working experience in the data science field yet. So my advice might be slightly restricted. But since we are focusing on how to enhance uh, your study pattern in UM, what I can say is for first year, first semester, 
the tips that have been mentioned throughout this sharing session are extremely useful. But what makes data science special is in the second year subject. An intro to data science is second year IS subject, but don't panic first. For intro to data science, they cover quite basic stuff, so it's still very much manageable. But for machine learning, it's slightly heavy, and they'll be using Python. So what I can suggest is during the semester break, maybe look up on the basics for Python. So when you start learning machine learning, it wouldn't you wouldn't feel so lost in it. And do not only limit to yourself to what UM is teaching. You can do external resources like DataCam and Coursera. They have a lot of wonderful online courses there. And know that data science is a very, very wide field. So you can explore in many things. See where your interest is and just go dive into it during your free time. And not to forget that, you know, UM has a lot of connections and they tend to organize a lot of workshops in our faculty. See which workshops would be useful for you and then don't hesitate to join because most of the time they are free. So why not take the advantage? That's all from me. Thanks, Jeannie. So next question. This one is about software engineering. So uh, Kisha, uh, what makes software engineering different from other computer science course? Okay, thank you, Munir, for the question. Um, actually, for the first year, um, all the courses, uh, students from all the departments will learn almost all same subjects. So the basic knowledge on programming and computer science will be seen. What differs the most is during your uh, specialization courses during our second and third year. So I would say all the courses are interrelated. For example, we as uh, software engineering students, we focus more on the engineering part, like uh, developing the software, managing the software, AI, they might incorporate some uh, AI techniques like uh, biometric, let's say, um, face recognition in that software. CSN, they might uh, integrate some uh, security systems. RS, maybe they provide the user requirements. Data science, they might uh, give us some data on how to manage the software. So I would say there are not, um, there are differences between these causes, but they are interrelated. Thank you. Thanks, Kisha. So um, last question. So this one is for Amir. Can you explain more about what we are going to study in our degree and our job prospects? All right. So regarding our job prospect, there is a lot of job for you, uh, for the CS graduate. And I'm going to say just um, some of it, uh, which is uh, the first one is uh, an application analyst. And then you have uh, a freelance programmer and then you have uh, developers, a web developers, a software developers, uh, and OS developers, and then database administrators. And then this is, which is, I think, uh, suitable for the IS, IS um, courses, which is the business information database admin. And then the last one is, I think, networking engineers. So uh, don't think that if you are an uh, you if you are IS student, you cannot be a developer, which is actually very wrong. Uh, every CS student, uh, I think, are able to uh, to get the job uh, that I list list out lah. And then uh, as for what are we going to study for our whole degree? Um, well, obviously, we are going to go through subjects uh, regarding uh, computers, uh, regarding digital technologies, the front end systems, the back end system, and then the all sort of things regarding digital technologies uh, and other core topics that will make you a great, a great computer science graduate. But as for the IS student, we are going to mo focus more on the business sides of computer science. And then other than the core subject, uh, subjects of being uh, computer science, we are going to learn uh, fundamentals of business and uh, other logic thinking subjects that will help you uh, be better. Lah. And then there is also our subjects that will focus on 
your social skills like uh, the English subjects, the thinking and communication, uh, the thinking and communication skill subjects. Those are the examples of uh, the subjects that will help you improve your uh, social skills. Uh, you will also learn uh, to manage a team, to conduct a program, and to uh, actually be a leader of a project. Lah. So I think that's all. Thanks, Amir. So we've done going through all the questions that students have asked earlier. So um, just a brief summary of what we just discussed. So um, first, we talk about online learning class. So um, the technical problems, like how to overcome them, um, any tips to stay disciplined. And we also talk about presentation, how to make an online presentation, about assignments, how to excel in assignments, how to become a good team members. Um, and then also talk about online exams. So how to do the past year questions. What are the things that uh, that should do or should not do during exams? And also talk about the subject tips. So I'm um, done with that. So right now uh, we're going to move on into the uh, live Q&A session. So, um, just another reminder, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comment section and we'll go through the questions. So, um, let's go through the first one. So, uh, Faiz Zaki asked, you're in the best university in the country and among the top in the region and the world, in fact, top 60. How do you suggest your fellow juniors to take advantage of that? So, All right, I'll take that question. So thank you, Faizaki, for this wonderful question. All right, as you mentioned, UM is in top 60 of the entire world. So you know that the branding is already there. Put that to good use, especially when you're organizing any events or projects. Since you, UM has the good branding, so it's easier, easier for us to collaborate with other NGOs or corporations. And then besides that, build connections. University is a very, very good platform for you to make connections with among your peers. Cause who knows, the guy next to you in class might be very successful in the future. And then when you're organizing a lot of events, you're going to have UM's name. So don't forget to like uphold the reputation of UM as well. And lastly, I, like I mentioned earlier, UM organizes a lot of events. And in those events, they have many corporations that collaborate with them. It's because of the branding. So it's a good chance for you to join. And that's about it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny, for answering the question. So next one. So uh, Fahmi Hafiz asked, how do you balance between your studies and involvement in student organization, if any? So, uh, okay. Kishok. Okay, thank you, Muni. Uh, thank you, Fahmi Hafiz. Okay, when you say student organization, okay, let me uh, clarify. For your extra curri uh, curricular uh, programs, you have uh, projects under your college, you have uh, some uh, clubs under your faculties, and also you have some student organization under UM itself. So when you say, uh, talk about project under college, uh, residential college, uh, usually previously before this pandemic, usually students will uh, get involved into quite a number of uh, college uh, projects to secure your place for the next year in college, uh, to be able to get a room in uh, college. Uh, and if you ask me how to balance between studies and student organization, I would say it's all about time management. The most important part, time management. So I would suggest you to download some uh, app uh, or planners, uh, basically planners, so that you can plan your time, you can uh, manage your time between your studies and also your uh, projects. Projects, uh, it depends. If you are just a participant, uh, um, a normal participant in that uh, society, you might not have uh, much involvement. But if you are uh, under the committee, so of course there might be uh, meetings uh, weekly or monthly. So you have to manage your time well. And remember your first aim coming to university is uh, for you to be able to graduate successfully. So your main focus should be your studies. 
and don't uh, force you, uh, yourself into too many projects, too many uh, student organizations. Know your limits, know your uh, capabilities and abilities. Join uh, as much as uh, clubs and organization that you can manage. And yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Kishore. So uh, next question. So uh, Muhammad Rahiman asked, what is one thing or mistake that you did during your first year that you regret and wish you didn't do in the first place? So uh, anyone? Any of the panelists? Uh, I'll take that question, Muni. All right. Um, I think personally for me in my first year, especially I think in my first semester, I didn't like properly uh, time out my, I didn't manage my time entirely properly. There were subjects like computer CSO and computing mathematics that I didn't pay the most attention to the way I should have in order to score properly, especially when at the time we had competing mathematics. It was based on uh, assessment, mark, assessment marks were also based on quizzes. And I didn't take into account that overall assessment marks were going to take up 50% of your final examination mark. So in the end, I slightly missed out on my assessment marks, I would say. And that surprisingly brought down my grade. It wasn't drastic to say the least, but I learned later on that you need to take your tutorials, your assessments, your even your labs very seriously because these do amount to a very good, uh, to a very large uh, amount of your total final marks later on, and of course leading to your grade. And secondly, I would say that a, a very big regret of mine is that you should really take care of your health properly. I didn't manage my sleep very well. I ate quite badly, so there, there came times where assignments I was I was going throughout the entire night is completing the assignments, but they could have been managed, they could have been better if we just managed our time better and completed them even prior to much, much, much earlier. So yeah, I would think those would be my, the things that if I could go back, I would try to improve on those and I would probably even have a better experience like I'm having in my second year now. That's from me. Thanks for the sharing, Naim. All right, next question. Kingsley Cheng asked, in this hard time of pandemic, we are all required to adapt to the new normal. New ways of doing things, lectures have been digitalized, supposedly physical orientation has been converted to a virtual one. Sudden change of norm creates stress among humans. How are you guys adapting to the new normal? And what are the examples of stress handling methods? All right, I, I'll take that question. Okay, go on. All right, so actually, uh, we are aware that uh, on this pandemic, uh, everyone is stressed out. The student are stressed out. The lecturer are stressed out. Yeah, everyone is stressed out. So there will always be some kind of um, things that you can do to actually relieve your stress. So the, the most important one is you have to always have a positive mind. Lah. So you have to think that you are not the only one that actually are having a hard time because everyone else is having a having a hard time uh, too. You also you also have to think uh, you also have to think that um uh not everything can go as you plan because sometimes there is uh, there is always an area when it comes to um online classes, online presentation. So they will always have uh, a problem that you cannot control and yeah and then uh, when you are on the uh, online lectures uh, you will also uh, feel stressed out when you sit too long so um, take a break uh, maybe uh, stop your camera and then uh, mute your mic and then maybe you can go for a walk not too far away for a walk just uh, walk around your room just like that lah. so uh, just take some time and then you, you will also want to actually spend some time for yourself. 
just sometimes, not a lot of time for yourself, just because uh, just to, to relieve your stress. Uh. I think that's all. Yeah. Thanks, Amir, for answering the question. So, um, next one. Fahmi Hafiz asked, so uh, most of the points mentioned by the panels are primarily related to programming. Any soft skills that juniors should prepare, especially during presentation and whatnot? Uh, okay, Munil, I will take this question. Uh, okay. Thank you, Munir, and thank you, Hami Hafiz, for the questions. Um, there are many skills you need to prepare, but in this session, I would like to mention three of the skills. Um, the main soft skills you need to be prepared is definitely your time management skills, communication skills, and presentation skills. For the time management skills, as the other seniors said just now, our university provides many activities that you can join to enjoy your uni life. But you need to control yourself from participating all the activities. Do not pick up too many activities as it will stress out yourself. Um, for me, academic is the most important thing in my uni life. So I personally do not join much activities when I was in first year. Because I know my limit, my programming skills is not so strong. So I suggest you to make a personal schedule to keep track all the deadlines. It would be definitely help you to manage your uni life. Uh, next, for the communication skills, for most of the courses, we need to have a group assignment. Hence, we need to communicate well in my, uh, with our teammates. If you and your teammates have different opinions, please do not argue with them. Instead, communicate and discuss with them. Please respect, please respect your teammates. Then you all can figure out the best solution for the problems in a best way. Then, for the presentation skills, as we need to do many presentations during our class, especially to present our assignment, we need to master the presentation skills. If you struggle stage fright like me, um, I suggest you to keep practice and practice. Talk to yourself in front of a mirror or do a practice presentation before the real presentation so you can figure out all the mistakes you made and correct it before the assessment. And um, for what you should not to do is don't ponteng, don't ponteng lecture. This is important as you would miss some important information from your lecturer. And please don't just leave your task to your teammates to do during the group project. They have no obligation to help you complete your part. So please be active in your group discussion and meetings. You will learn more soft skills during the collaboration with your teammates. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. So um, next question. Nadia Jamhari asked, what is the one thing that you guys wish you would have during the first year? Maybe it can help us? Uh, I can take All it right. if you want. All right, sure. Uh, OK, uh, so um, what is the one thing that you guys wish, that I wish that I would have done during my first years? Um, Maybe it's because of the pandemic, uh, so as we do not go to war. But I think the most the thing I doing when I was in first years is actually um, going out. I think during the whole session, I think we've leaned very heavily towards uh, trying trying to be like very academically as possible, like. Everything that we've been uh, addressing thus far has been very academic, 
academical uh, gitu. Um, so, uh, so that that can be very tolling in our own um, mental health. I'm not really sure if there's something that you would want to hear, tapi degree would be the most hardest. Uh, could be the quite a very hard time in your life you know you have uh, a lot of things going on you know you're in your 20s and it's not like you're that stable you know mentally stable when you when you you're in 20s kadang you go crazy um but yeah you need to have try you involved in with too many uh, activities with too many assignments uh, you have to worry about your finals as well you need to have a space you need to let you have let you have a space to kind of like you know take a break you know uh this is the pandemic so it does not really apply now but maybe when you know we were lifted uh, of this cmco um because we live in KL, kan? the the faculty is in KL, the campus is in KL. Try to go out. Uh, for me, what I will what I will very much miss to do was actually, I think in TTDI, I, I once go at the uh, cafe kucing, uh, a cat cafe. That was a, a, a very fun experience for me. You know, uh, habis hilang stress terus. So yeah, um, that would be the thing that I would like to advise you guys. Uh, Take a break. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Naku. So uh, we also have another question. Daniel Meja asked, seeing as everything is moved virtually, it's difficult to create and manage relationships with other batchmates. Do you have any advice on how to build good relationships with them online? So anyone would like to take the question? Uh, ah, okay, <laughs> tak uh, so how to maintain a good relationship with someone? Ah, uh, try to WhatsApp them often. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the also the one thing that I didn't do much when I was in, I was in first years. Ah, uh, kenapa skinny tak fokus ke muka ayah? Ah, uh, apa tu tadi? I you need to socialize a lot when you're in your first years. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that I would very much a key takeaway is try to exchange your social media contacts, you know, follow yourself in IG. You know, this is the most important thing as well, of, uh, of course, uh, during this uh, social pan uh, this pandemic, because you cannot see each other, okay? So, you know, try to take the initiative, lah. try to check out, try to be friendly with everyone, because uh, if no one is going to initiate it, um, uh, it would be very hard for you to kind of like form relationships uh, with uh, in uh, in college lah. Because you cannot see each other. Can kalau tak ada siapa nak the initiative to kind of like you know uh, you know meet the first contact, then how would you suppose that uh, you could build a good re report? With the with your cosmates, you know, for example. So again, and this is this is of you, Bila, When we left your group, can you have your group chat? Can when we left the group chat, um, take like the initiative to get to know each other. You know, joke around. You know, check out. Uh, okay, now IG uh, page, please, and then. You know, try to build a good rapport with them, you know, kalau ada status reply, something like that. You know, it seems simple, but it's it's, it's social, okay? It's a social skill, social, you can do it, you know, to try to build a good rapport with your cosmates and everything. So surely, uh, mm, that would be my advice lah, uh, if you want to build a good relationship with them online, because you cannot do it physically. And hopefully, when the again the CMCO lifted, then maybe you can go out for a good meal in the cafe. Mm, who knows? Okay, that's all for me.
So uh, thanks, Napu, again, for answering the question. Um, so we have another one. So by Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence asked, hi, may I ask if any of the seniors have any experiences involving online conflict? Do you have any advice to avoid or solve such conflicts if they occur? All right, so uh, I'm going to take this question. Yeah, so when it comes to online conflicts, you will, this is something that you cannot avoid. Lah. So um, online conflicts uh, such as like when you are going to uh, submit your attendance at Spectrum, but you, you actually have uh, submitted it, but it doesn't show uh, that you are uh, that you attend the class uh, in the lecture screen. So these are some of the online conflicts that we will always it, that will always occur. So um, one of my advice to avoid or, or solve these conflicts is that you will actually have to email the doctor yourself and then uh, ask him about the conflicts that you are having lah, and then. Uh, ask the uh, the lecturer to uh, to help you uh, in the best way you can uh. So these are some of the online conflict that you will you will you will uh, yeah, that will occur uh. Yeah. So that's all. Thanks. Thanks, Amir. So um so we'll proceed with uh, one of the last questions. Muhammad Rahman asked, "Who's Ray?" Not sure who Sri is. Uh, <laughs> Muhammad Sri. <laughs> okay. Um. I believe. I believe that's all for uh, the Q and A session. So um, before we end our session, uh, I'd like to kindly ask the juniors to fill in the feedback form. Uh, we welcome any suggestions for uh, future improvements of events. So uh, we will also show the QR code on the screen. And URL to the feedback form will also be posted in the comment section. So um, while waiting for participants to fill in the feedback form, um, to all of the panelists, uh, do you have any final words to say or anything else to share? Not from I my think... <laughs> I think personally from me, yeah, just don't stress yourself out too much. University is going to be tough, like a lot of our seniors just previously mentioned. But it's also the time where you have long fun and you build up yourself. This is your final, most likely final education part of your life before you go into the workforce. So this is your time to make good friends. Uh, and have a lot of fun. Computer science is a lot of fun, but you have to put in the work for it. So I wish you all the best, and I do hope you're taking care of home. That's from me. Okay, uh, thanks, Naim. So I think uh, that's all the time we have uh, for today. Thank you so much to our seniors for having such wonderful insights. I hope the juniors have benefited from the ideas, thoughts, and um, anything that's been discussed throughout this session. Uh, I'd like to thank all the juniors for uh, joining this sharing session. Uh, goodbye and stay safe. Yo guys, uh, do subscribe and please click the likes button. Yeah, see you.